functions that are bounded and defined on a closed interval are the functions that we have considered in the definition of the Riemann integral. However, in many practical applications, it might be good to have a version of the integral that works for more general functions. Such integrals can be defined using sophisticated tools. For instance, the famous Lebesgue integral works for a much larger class of functions than those that are bounded and defined on a closed interval. However, the Lebesgue integral is quite difficult to define and is technically a part of a graduate course. What we are going to do now is to take a much more restrictive approach and define integrals for certain functions that might be unbounded or defined on an unbounded interval. This definition is going to be just a slight tweak of the definition of the Riemann integral and is therefore much easier to handle. As an application, we will use this more general integral to devise a test of convergence of series called the integral test. So let's move on to the definition. Definition. Let f from open A close B to R be a function that is integrable that is integrable on on close C D sorry close C B for all C coming from the open interval AB. So you are given a function defined on a one sided interval A the point A is not really there in the interval. However, when you take any point C in the open interval AB and restrict this function f to the close interval CB you end up with an integrable function. Okay, If limit C going to A, I should say C going to A plus because technically I want C to come only from the closed interval AB. If limit C going to A plus integral C to B F exists or is infinite, then, then we define we define the limit as the improper integral, improper integral, integral a to b of f. Okay. Let me just add a remark. If, if the limit is infinite, it could be plus or minus infinity. If the limit is infinite, then we say we say we say the integral a to b f diverges otherwise otherwise if the limit is finite limit is finite we say integral a to b f converges. Okay? So, note carefully integral a to b f could not exist at all in the first place. Then if it exists, it could either converge or diverge. If it converges, then the value is going to be a finite real number. If it diverges, it is going to be either plus or minus infinity. Okay? So, where does such integrals come up in practice? Well, the best way to see that is to actually see an example of such an integral. Example, let us consider the function f of x equal to x power minus 1 by 3. Okay? And we define this on the interval open 0, close 1. Okay? Note that this function is not even defined at 0. Now, let us see whether uh, we can make, I mean we can compute the improper integral of this function x power minus 1 by 3. Well, let us integrate integral c to 1 f. Okay? 
which is just integral c to 1 x bar minus 1 by 3 dx and from elementary high school integration this is just 3 by 2 x bar 3 by 2 and I have to substitute the limits which is c and 1 which is just going to be 3 by 2 into 1 minus c power 2 by 3 okay now as as c approaches 0 plus clearly clearly the above limit is 3 by 2 above limit is 3 by 2 okay therefore 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 integral a to b f converges so the improper integral of x bar minus 1 by 3 on the interval 0 1 exists and in fact this integral converges and the value of the integral is going to be 3 by 2. Now let us see an example where the improper integral diverges. For this take g of x g of x equal to 1 by x again for defined on open 0 closed 1. Just judging from the graph you would think that this integral improper integral does not exist but let us check that rigorously again we have to compute integral c to 1 1 by x again from elementary calculus that you have learnt in school this is just log 1 minus log c okay and which is just uh, minus log c because log 1 is 0 now as c approaches 0 this minus log c sort of diverges to plus infinity okay so in other words integral 0 to 1 1 by x is plus infinity okay now if you have been following what i am saying carefully the following question would have arisen to you suppose i start with a function start with a function f from a b to r and let me write it as close so that there is no confusion it is closed a b to r which is integrable suppose i take take such a function then there is absolutely nothing stopping me from considering limit c going to a plus integral c to b f okay think about why integral c to b f is also defined it is rather easy why it is also defined so let us look at limit c going to a plus integral c to b f. What, what is its value? What is its value? Okay. So to understand this, I am going to give you an exercise. Exercise. Suppose, suppose f from a b to r is bounded is bounded and limit c going to a plus integral c to b f exists note implicitly when i write limit c going to a plus integral c to b f exists i am assuming that integral c to b f exists in other words for all points c for all points c in open interval a b i am assuming that the function f when restricted to close interval c b is integrable not only is it integral i am assuming that the limit exists then then integral a to b f also exists also exists okay now that i think about it i do not need to put this extreme restriction and I can just assume integral c to b f exists for all c, for all c in a b that is enough. So if you have a closed interval a b and a bounded function f on that closed interval a b and suppose you have that for all points c in between a and b integral c to b f exists then integral a to b f also exists. So in short what this is saying is the improper integral you need to tackle the spe special case of improper integral only under the condition that the function f is not actually bounded on the interval a b. So to clarify that let me also remark the value of this integral value of integral a to b f does not depend on 
does not depend on f of a. You can set f of a to whatever you want, the value of this integral will continue to be unchanged. Okay, so please solve this exercise. It is important and let you understand why exactly we are defining improper integrals the way we are. Okay, now there is no difficulty in generalizing this notion of improper integral to intervals of this form f from a b to r that need not be bounded. It is exactly analogous that need not be bounded. You can define for just like the left end point being not being there in the definition of f and the function being unbounded, you can consider uh, f from closed a open b to r in the exact same way. One other case remains that is functions that are defined on infinite integrals, uh, infinite intervals definition, definition let f from a infinity to r be a function such that such that f from a c to r or rather I will not use this notation f restricted to a c is integrable integrable for all c greater than a ok. So, what I am doing is I am considering a function that is defined on a one sided infinite interval such that whenever you take a finite quantity c and restrict the function to the close interval a c the function f is integrable. Then if then if limit c going to infinity you should guess where this is going integral a to c f exists ok by exists I could mean it could be finite or infinite. The limit either converges to a finite quantity or it goes to plus or minus infinity if this happens then 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 the improper integral improper integral of f on closed a open infinity and again this is denoted by a infinity of f is defined to be is defined to be integral a to a to infinity of f is equal to limit c going to a plus integral c to sorry a to c f ok. Now, let us see an example let us see an example there is nothing really great about this definition but let us see consider the function g of x to be equal to cos x consider the function g of x equal to cos x and we are going to define this on close 0 open infinity to r. This is a bounded function remember that ok. Of course, integral 0 to c cos x is nothing but sin c minus sin 0 which is sin c ok. So, the function cos x is uh, integrable for any closed interval of the form 0 comma c that is straightforward and obvious, but limit c going to infinity of sin c obviously does not exist, obviously does not exist ok. Therefore, therefore the improper integral, improper integral integral 0 to infinity cos x does not exist ok. So, we cannot assign a sensible meaning to integral 0 to infinity cos x. Again this is expected sort of from the graph if you think about the graph of cos x it will be clear to you that one cannot actually expect so this function to be integrable in any sense. Let us see another example consider f of x f of x equal to x power minus 2 for x 
greater than or equal to 1. Okay. Now, let us try to compute integral 1 to infinity of this function f. Okay. Now, let us take integral 1 to c x bar minus 2. And again from basic calculus, this is just minus 1 by x and the limits are 1 and c, which is just 1 minus 1 by c. Okay. Now, as c approaches infinity, this above quantity converges to 1, which means integral 1 to infinity x bar minus 2 exists and equals 1. Okay. So, the best way to make sense of these improper integrals is to actually draw the graphs of the various functions that we have considered and to see which type of functions seem to have improper integrals and which type of functions do not seem to have improper integrals. In the next module, we will apply this basic theory to prove a nice test for convergence called the integral test. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on improper integrals.